Well, video production is basically visual communication. So in this classroom, we do a combination of television production and film production. We produce videos, but we also study film. We learn about making movies, short films, stuff like they do up in AFN, like commercials, TV shows, all that stuff. We learn about all of that here in this course. It's really anything to do with um, video at all. This is my second year here at Naples High School um, and this is the first school where I've actually had the privilege of teaching video communications. There aren't a lot of schools that actually offer this program so we're fortunate that, that we're big enough here to offer video production. There's a lot of video work that's happening in, in this classroom every week and we're trying to crank out as many products as we can. We don't do too much but at the same time we have enough work that keeps us busy. It's not crazy difficult work, but at the same time, it's challenging. The year one students t tend to have more work because they're learning about all the equipment to work with, so that might be a little bit hard for them. They might struggle with it at first. The year two students still have the same work, but they might speed through it faster. We're, we're basically responsible for um, public uh, affairs for the school. So we go out and we cover as many events that happen in the school as possible. So. Um, for example, there are many sports that take place all year long and we try to cover every home sport and sometimes that means I have students in four different locations. So it can, it can be spread a little thin on some days and certainly our weekends are really busy. When there's a big project, you could end up spending a lot of days after school working on it. Sometimes it, there's a nice lull where we're just kind of learning about skills and um, the technical parts that we kind of get a little bit of a break. Uh, we currently use the um, Canon camcorders and the Sony SLR cameras. As far as cameras go, this year was, was really um, a great year for us because when I arrived last year we had very little in the way of cameras. Had two JVC digital uh, camcorders and then we also had a bunch of camcorders that required tape. Recording over tape would sometimes be an issue. Uh, sometimes you wouldn't know if tape had been used yet or not and then getting that footage onto the computer could always be a bit challenging but now that it's all digital we can just plug it right in. We have standard tripod. We have a, a nice green screen set uh, with backdrops and professional lighting so it's very nice. Before we had uh, lights that were not stationary so you could move them around. We had like a deployable green screen that had a lot of wrinkles and was not very user friendly. It causes a lot of problems. Um, and just uh, substandard equipment wasn't really all that great. Um, the software that Dots provides for us is uh, the Premiere is part of the Adobe package, the Adobe Suite as they call it, and it's a family of programs that were all produced um, by Adobe and they work in conjunction with each other. So we use Premiere Pro. Which is where you edit your film, so it's like the post-production. I specialize in using After Effects from the Adobe CS6 suite. With After Effects, I can do tons of things between advanced color keying, keying with different color lights all in the same color heats all within the same video. I can do text effects. Um, I've done a video with lightsabers before. There's an endless amount of things you can do with After Effects. Um, and there's another part of it that's for sound. So we use those three components um, quite a bit. On the Macs though, sometimes the students like to use iMovie because it's quick and easy and they can crank something out really quick um, in a crunch. I don't like iMovie because you can't store it anywhere but on the 
hard drive of that particular computer. I don't like the fact that you can't save that file to our remote storage device. So I think it's, it's very limiting that way. And then a student would always have to use the same computer to open their project. And Final Cut is also something that Dodds has licenses for. Um, it's, it's not loaded on our, our machines yet, but that is definitely something that we do need to, to acquire. There's always, there's always annoyances. I think um, the thing that's most maddening in this field is, you know, technical difficulty. So there's always some piece of equipment that's just not cooperating, you know, from one day to another. It's always the technical things. So the best laid plans can fall apart at the last second when a piece of equipment doesn't work or the power goes out. At the beginning of the year, we were having all kinds of problems. Every time it rained, the school power would go out. And our first film club, we spent mostly talking in the dark, waiting for the lights to come back on so we could we could watch our film. Sometimes, uh, like there's not the right program loaded on a computer, and that's really annoying because you have to sign out and then log back into something else, which takes several minutes to do. Um, and that can really stink in a crunch for time. Um, Another problem is a lot of the programs will randomly crash. Uh, it, it hasn't happened um, recently too much, but definitely during the beginning of the year was a big problem. It might be if you have to do a collaboration project, if you're picked with students that are really, really incompetent cameramen. So it reminds me of a story that another video comm student was telling me about, because speaking of incompetent cameramen, this um, person was working with another student and um, she saw the framing that they had on the person and it was just like some of the worst framing. It was like it went from here down. And so she said when he wasn't looking, she turned the camera and moved it upward while he wasn't looking. So she got the perfect framing. But just I want to work with competent people. So it's kind of hard because you think, God, these are just such basic concepts. I would have to say Whenever I get a big project and I'm going on a major workload and I've got a deadline, it's not necessarily that it annoys me, but I sort of get on end because I'm trying to finish it as fast as I can, but I'm also a perfectionist, so it has to look nice. I'm trying to get all those videos out and trying to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. And sometimes when things go wrong, it can, you know, put people on edge. I will, I will say that. Uh, so the amount of work that you're willing to put into it is really um, the amount of work that you're going to have to do. This industry in general is, is a very demanding industry. Um, you're expected to produce a lot of product and you're expected to do it on a short deadline. And so I try to do that in my class to get the kids, give the kids a sense of what it's really going to be like to work in this industry. So you constantly have to be planning for the next product, right? Um, you might be in the middle of editing one project, but it's time to start planning your next project because logistics are really important. There's a lot of planning up front that goes into any video that you produce. A basic timeline in this classroom would be, um, I will give out an assignment and the kids will work just on the planning process for at least a week. So they'll brainstorm an idea, then they'll um, share those ideas with their team. They'll isolate the best idea. And then once they do that, they still have to write a treatment, which is the plan for their project. And then they write a script and they draw a storyboard. And all of those elements have to be approved before they ever pick up a camera. So we have at least a week of planning. We have probably another week of shooting and we have another week of editing. So it takes about three weeks to complete a project. Well, the two that I have the students enter every year um, are one in the fall is sponsored by the, the National PTA. Um, it's a national contest and any school with a PTA can enter and it's called the Reflections Contest. Reflections is basically you're giving, given like a little phrase and then just that's very ambiguous and you can find a way to interpret it in different art forms but obviously our art form is film so we have to find a good execution of that statement. And um, last year we were very successful um, and we had Jesse was our first place winner at school and then he went on to the European level and won there and even went 
on to compete at the national level. And then also we have the Film Fest, the Dodds Film Fest, which is a major um, film fest that goes around all the Dodds schools. And so this is sort of where you can test your skills against the other people in uh, Dodds. You are given the options between making a documentary, short film, short music video, PSA, etc. Just the list goes on what you can make, but you have to follow certain guidelines because that one's a lot more loose and less strict than the reflections. You can't use copyright music. You have to make your own, or either that, you just use music of the public domain. So I recommend you always find classical music, because that's always public domain. We only had a month to do our, to, to begin filming, so we were able to plan before then, but we had a month to, to film and edit everything uh, for our videos. And then later we found out that we actually had the entire year to do that. Um, we had taken the inverse of the dates and decided that that was when, uh, when we were allowed to film. But I've been really pleased with the things that the kids have produced in a 30-day turnaround time. So we had some really good results this year. Last year we, weren't, we didn't get any, any winners, but this year we had two projects that were um, rated excellence, given an award of excellence. So we had uh, one was in the freestyle um, category, and the other was in the public service announcement category. So we were really pleased um, to have that for the first time for our school. What does it take to win an award? Well, I think the most important ingredient is to think outside of the box. So um, I find that students who win um, these competitions interpret something in a way that no one else has thought of yet. And it really makes people go, ah, right? The light bulb goes on and you go, that is so different. That's so unique. Um, the way that you see the world is different than everyone else. I think that's the, the, the most important ingredient. Creativity. Uh, it's creativity time. You, uh, you really need to learn how to manage your time in order to uh, be able to plan everything out and carry it out. And uh, time was definitely a major factor in the videos that we produced for that. You have to have what they're looking for is the most originality and you actually have to be competent. So you can't have, a f you can't send in like this crappy video where all the framing and lighting and just the audio, just terrible, most unwatchable thing. Like if you ever watch Andy Warhol from the 60s, they're not looking for stuff like that. Just, oh, like I've seen some pretty bad ones from the Dodds Film Fest page and I'm just like, were these made by like middle schoolers? You always have at least three types of judges. You'll have your judge who will really only give you positive feedback stating, this was a great video, I like how you utilized this. Generally you have your middle of ground judge who will give you some helpful pointers in either direction. There's always usually like the one really, really nitpicky judge that like will nitpick just everything in your video from just the littlest things that do not matter. I mean, he's still helpful, but you could kind of tone it down, nitpicky guy. I mean, seriously. I had three judges. Um, two actually gave me a pretty good score. So they, one told, uh, wrote that I should receive excellent. Another wrote that I should re either receive excellent or the next step down, which is still really good. I think it was commendable. And then the third judge was uh, a little, he was a little overly critical, to say the least. His exact words were, this film sh uh, should not be rated regardless of the score. And I won. I beat him. <laughs>Video club, specifically uh, video staff, as we call it, is where we come in, we'll have people working on projects and finalizing projects, and we'll mainly be working on the morning announcements that we do 
that we play during a seminar on the first or second B day of the week, depending on whether that's a Monday or a Tuesday. So they take all the news that we've shot over the week, the packages that are ready, we put it together, um, we write a script, one of the students is our talent and that changes from week to week. The kids rotate through jobs so we don't always have the same person who is the director or the technical director or the camera operator and they take job, they take turns playing those roles. And we produce um, the student news. So. It's, uh, we've done 24 shows this year. We're on week 24. The Morning Announcements focuses on everything in the upcoming week, any major events coming on, and everything that happened in the past week and the past weekend. So in other words, we'll cover all the sports that happened over that weekend, as an example. The green is for green screening. It's a computer process where you, you select a shade of green and you replace that shade of green wherever it appears in your clip, your video clip, with some other video source that you want to replace it with. Um, the way that we use it predominantly in this room is for our news set because we don't actually own a set. So it's a virtual set, pretty cool. It's what I like to call movie magic. Our production switcher is called a TriCaster and that's what generates our um, fake, fake set and allows us to do live production. I am the technical director. In other words, I'm the person on the TriCaster switching between cameras, switching between shots, pulling up all the footage, the photos. I'm more or less doing everything behind the scenes while the anchors and the main director, the main director telling us what to do and the anchor um, being on camera. I think a fair amount of teachers are showing the student news. Uh, definitely not as many as there could or should be. Um, well, I actually poll my students in class to get a good idea. I'd say about 50% of the students get to watch the student news. So we definitely have 50% of the, the seminar classes are not tuning in um, on a regular basis to watch the news. I think maybe it's because uh, they feel like they're what they're teaching is so important they don't want to waste any time with like a five minute segment on the morning news so they feel like they need to get it to it precisely and just get started right away. I think it's fun for kids to have their own school show, to have their own news. And I think there are a lot of kids in the school that look forward to seeing it every week. I know that when we go out to shoot, um, kids ask if it's going to be for the news and they're excited about knowing that their peers will get to watch them and that they're going to get some publicity, right? The film club, now this is very interesting. Film history is part of the curriculum, but unfortunately I can only fit in so many films per year. Um, and so there was, there was a, a few students who were really interested in getting together and watching a lot of these classic films that we just didn't have time to cover during class. So Jesse and Carolyn um, were the two leaders who really kind of took this as their baby and um, planned out our whole schedule for the year and um, really put a lot of thought into what we would be doing each month. So we basically we've had a theme every month, which has been really fun. And um, we watch films that fit into that genre. They will play us some of the most amazing films of all time. I mean, films I've never heard of, yet once I watch them, they just go into my memory and they do not leave because uh, it's just some of the most amazing things I've ever seen. We usually try to go for films that are culturally important and films that no one else has seen. So like I did get kind of annoyed a bit when like some people were like, oh man, can we watch Forrest Gump? The classic Seven Samurai. Duck Soup. The silent films of um, the early film pioneers. I think I'd say Rebel Without a Cause was my favorite. You're tearing me apart! What? 
it's been an amazing thing that's gone on this year. It's been great and I really love it and I look forward to it all the time. I recently did a PSA where we had to try to sell the student yearbook. I was being a ham. See, because like the um, video is that I'm at this table with all of these yearbooks from the past years at Naples American High School, and I'm just flipping through them, and I'm like, <laughs> looking through them, and then um, there's another student, John Michael Spat, walking by, and I ask him to sign my yearbook, and he's like, no, I'm only gonna sign the newest edition. I'm sorry. Stapled and stapled was a stop motion piece about a stapler that was looking for love in all the wrong places and finally found love at the end of the, the piece. My favorite part was actually when they incorporated humans in with the stop motion um, unanimated objects. So we had a stapler, we had some other desk items that they were using to move around. Um, but then suddenly there was traffic flow in the hallway and we had one of the other students, they put him on a, on a dolly and he, he, he just rolled through their scene, which was really, really funny to me that they were able to do that. My absolute favorite video from this year was Jesse Percival's film. It was a uh, mock trailer called The Last Detention 8. The Last Detention 8. In frightening 3D. I was the um, voiceover and the first victim. No, you're all next. You're all next. Beware. I liked the uh, detention monster. Well, that was pretty fun. That was a fun piece, very creative piece. Hide. My favorite part would probably have to be when you get that last final shot and then it get, goes to red while and then the title pops up and you get that name the last detention eight in 3d and it just gives this awe-inspiring effect and you're just like i wish that was a real movie i enjoyed the cinematography i enjoyed all the the effects to it i enjoyed the music i enjoyed um the script and everything just, it was perfectly done as a mock uh, trailer. And I, it, it was just really clever and I liked it. Anything that might help future students? Go out there, be creative, do what will work. You know what will work, you will learn what will work. You will find the flaws, you'll find the pros. You'll learn this as you go on. You might not like your first year, but those students who get into the class, who really see the class as it is, and they see its potential, they see what can come out of it, and who continue on for their second year, their third year, doing it as the career practicum. Those students, I'll tell them this, it will be an amazing experience and possibly one of your favorite classes in high school. Um, learn how to confidently frame something or I'll hunt you down. I'll hunt you down and tell you how to frame somebody when you're shooting a film. I always tell kids, especially in my Pathways to Career class, that it's important to like what you do. Um, that you don't want to pick a career that, that you're not interested in. That you don't feel like you'll continue to grow in. I like coming to work every day because um, I get to be creative and I get to watch kids be creative. And that's what I really, I really am amazed by. The things that they come up with, with you know, the, the assignments that I'll throw at them and, and they'll, they'll come up with something that I hadn't thought of. And I, I really, really enjoy that. Ms. Spat, I have to say, she's possibly the best teacher I've ever had and this has possibly been my favorite class of all. I just gotta say thanks for being a great teacher because part of the reason I have enjoyed Videocom is because I've had it with a teacher that I've liked or else this would have probably been a living hell and I wouldn't have come back my second year, obviously. This is Spat as my mom, so I say this all the time, but I love you, mom, 
and you're the best. I hope that this program continues to grow and I hope that I maybe next year have a third year student and some additional second year students so that we can really um, build on what we've started. I actually don't know. I just, maybe it's because they're kind of lazy or either that they don't feel like it's very important. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at the doctor. Do lazy. not put that on there. <laughs> I said the truth though. <laughs> they asked me that question again. We need the rock, I just... Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay. I hope this was entertaining for Miss Wilson's project. <laughs>